In this example, we're going to derive the posterior distribution of the normal mean when the prior is uniform over the real line. We're going to assume our data are independent, identically distributed, normal random variables, conditional on knowing the mean parameter theta and the variance parameter sigma squared. We will treat sigma squared as a known fixed constant throughout our derivation. The marginal density of an observation conditional on knowing the parameters is shown here. The prior density is uniform over the real line. This is an improper prior because the integral of a constant over the real line diverges to infinity. This prior is stating that any value of theta is equally likely to occur over the real line. So negative 10 billion is just as likely to occur as 3. Our goal is to derive the posterior distribution for theta. If you're familiar with conjugate priors, you may be tempted to simply take the product of the data density and the prior density and determine if the kernel for theta looks like a known density. We should not do that here. That technique is only appropriate when the prior distribution is a proper statistical distribution, which is not the case here. We cannot guarantee that an improper prior will lead to a valid posterior distribution. Because of this, I don't recommend improper priors. A sufficiently vague proper prior should be available. Because we can't do the conjugate trick, we first need to determine the marginal density of the data y. Recall that the marginal density of y is simply the integral of the joint density over the support of the parameter theta. The joint density can be written as the product of the data density multiplied by the prior. The data density is going to be the product of the marginal densities, and the prior is simply the constant c. If we simplify the joint density and then move out any constant terms, we're left with this expression here. Anything not involving theta is a constant, so we can move those terms outside the integral. That leaves us with the simplified expression here. Next, we're going to expand the square term inside the exponential function. That leaves us with the expanded expression here. If we distribute these terms over the sum, we're left with the expression here. Then, we once again pull out any terms not involving theta. In this case, the part of the exponential function involving the sum of y sub i squared leading us to the new expression here. Next, we note that we can write the sum of the y's as n times y bar, which allows us to modify the kernel inside the exponential function, giving us the updated expression here. Next, we're going to factor the n out of the expression in the exponential kernel. This looks a bit like the exponential part of a normal distribution, and we're going to exploit that. We want to complete the square so that the inner part is theta minus y bar squared. To do that, we'll multiply the inner part by 1 in a special way. Specifically, we note that 1 equals the exponential function of negative n over 2 sigma squared times y bar squared times the exponential function of n over 2 sigma squared times y bar squared. Multiplying by that form of 1 in the integral, we get a long expression for the marginal density of y. We can bring this exponential kernel outside the integral. We'll combine this exponential kernel with this exponential kernel here. That allows us to simplify the marginal density of y to this expression here. Notice that we've now completed the square and we can rewrite the inner part of the exponential function as theta minus y bar squared. Notice that the integral looks like the density of a normal distribution with a mean of y bar and a variance of sigma squared over n, but we're missing some constants. The constants we need are the inverse of the square root of 2 pi and the inverse of sigma over the square root of n. Noting that we can write 1 as n to the 1 half power times n to the negative 1 half power, we can bring sigma over the square root of 2 pi in the denominator back inside the integral, and then rearrange some of our constants to get. This is the integral of the density function of a normal y bar sigma squared over n density. So this must integrate to 1. Thus, the marginal density of y is simply the constants outside of that integral. Before we try to find the posterior density, 
Let's start by manipulating the joint density P of Y and theta. First of all, you may recall that the joint density may be written as the product of the data density and the prior. In our context, that's going to be the product of the marginal densities of the data multiplied by the prior C. Going through the same steps as before, we're going to simplify our joint data density and pull out some of the constants, which results in the expression here. If we then expand the square, distribute over the sum, and factor out the constants that don't involve theta, we get the following expression. Using the fact that n over n equals 1, we can re-express the inner part of the kernel to obtain the following expression. If we factor n out of the expression here, we can simplify even further to get once again using the fact that 1 may be expressed in this way right here, we can continue our simplification process. First, we multiply by 1 in the joint density to get. Then, similar to before, we're going to combine this term with this term. Also, we're going to combine this term with this term to get. We can then simplify this part of the exponential function to get, which is very similar to what we had in the marginal density of the data. We're now ready to determine our posterior distribution. The posterior distribution is a joint distribution of y and theta divided by the marginal density of y. If we then substitute our previous derivations for the joint density and the marginal density of y, we get. As you can see, there's going to be a lot of cancellation. If we simplify further, we get, we can further simplify the constant term to get, which is the density of a normal y bar sigma squared over n distribution. Putting everything together, our posterior density has the following form, which is the density of a normal y bar sigma squared over n distribution. Thus, the posterior distribution for theta is normal, with a mean of y bar and a variance of sigma squared over n.